Fit Pro and PT on the net. My name is Robert Capuccio. My guest today is Mr. Chuck Wolf. Now, Chuck, I've heard multiple trainers on many occasions say that you are perhaps one of the best teachers that they've ever witnessed in the fitness industry. So it's an honor to have you here. And as a matter of fact, we just caught Chuck, as you can see, finishing up a large presentation at the Ideal World Conference. So thank you for taking some time out. Well, Bobby, thank you. And thanks PT on the net and FitPro for allowing me to do this. And uh, actually, I, I'm indebted to them and to IDEA uh, because they've given me the opportunity to, to share thoughts with uh, trainers all over the world. And, and uh, it's just a passion to be able to, to express what goes on in some complex situations and try and bring it down to simplistic or relatively simplistic uh, uh, concepts that people can associate with. Um, it's communication. And if you communicate what you love, you find a way to make it happen. And, and you see the desire in their eyes. And uh, it just, it, it flatters and humbles me that so many people give me the opportunity to, to be there. So, and to share with them. So thank you. Well, you're appreciated as well. Tell us a little bit about yourself so we can get to know you. What's your background? <coughs> How did you become to be a presenter? You weren't always a presenter, were you? Well, I, um, I've been a practicing exercise physiologist for 28 years. I originally went to school and I was a sociology major. I uh, withdrew from school when I was in my second year, actually in my first semester of my junior year, uh, and I pursued my lifelong dream, which was being a professional baseball player. Uh, I had the opportunity to do that for a bit, about a year and a half, and had an injury, and wasn't quite ready to go back to school, so I went into the sales industry. My father had been in sales for years. I did that, and I, and I believe that's where you start learning communication. Because if we're teaching or, or, or selling health and fitness, uh, it's still a salesmanship, that you're, you're just selling a product. In this Whoa. case, it may be fitness. Prior, when I was in sales of a different industry, that was the start. What would you say to a trainer that says, well, you know, I'm not selling the product, I'm educating and I'm a trainer, so sales has nothing to do with what I do. Well, I'm not, uh, the thing is, sales in itself shouldn't be a, a hard sell. Sales should be a way to meet people's needs. And if you have the passion and the understanding uh, and, and you, you can demonstrate to people how it will benefit them, <clears throat> you don't have to sell. So because you say, actually will buy in. Let me stop you right there. Okay. So are you saying that if you're serious about meeting people's needs, you should be serious about developing some type of sales acumen? Sales acumen is, is meeting their needs. Sales acumen, at least the way I look at it, is meeting their needs and, and listening to what their needs are first. If you can listen, somehow position, and fulfill that need and that objective, that's what a salesman will do, filling that niche. And uh, in fitness, health and fitness is the same way. Well, based on that definition, if we're not to a degree salespeople, not as the major definite purpose, but as part of our role, well, it's almost impossible to help somebody get from where they are now to where they want to go. Am I hearing that correctly? Say that once more. Huh. Why, while sales might not be a major definite purpose, salesmanship and sales skills to a degree is essential in helping somebody go from where they are now to where they want to go. Well, yes, you're correct. However, we can look at salesmanship as as hard sell. There's certain, there's certain companies in our industry that do hard sell for the membership. No. There's, there's certain industries that, and, and certain the products that you have the salesman that is the hard sell. I'm not talking about that. If you can develop the relationship, you develop the rapport because we are in a relationship business. Sales is a relationship business. Do you and I connect? Are we listening to each other? Are we meeting those needs? That has to be relationship based. And if we're not in a relationship business, uh, or if you're not in the, if you don't have the ability to build relationships, then we're in the wrong business because we're a, a, we're a relationship oriented business. Well, Chuck, you amongst many other great presenters are a master connector. I mean, that's arguable, but a lot of people would hold that opinion. What's the key to being a really good connector? Not just as a presenter, but more importantly for our viewers, as a trainer connecting with their client, what's the key to being really good at building rapport? Well, I think, I think there's a few keys, Bobby. One is, is having empathy. 
What is empathy? Empathy, I believe, it's, it's a kind of a generic term, but empathy is having the ability to, to more or less feel, to more or less uh, sense, to more or less, in, in common terms, get an appreciation of what those people may be feeling to walk in their shoes, to think where you came from and, and not forget that. Uh, empathy is, is having a sense of, of humbleness. Em empathy is having a sense of, of feeling uh, and sensitivity for the others of what they may be experiencing, even though you didn't physically or emotionally go through it, at least be able to relate so how it, they may <clears throat> feel. So even if you've lacked that experience, having the ability to care enough to imaginably project yourself into that person's situation. Perfectly well put. And, and that's what I think I've always been impressed with you, is that you have that ability to, to convey those things. I've seen you speak, and uh, it's always motivating and enlightening because you have great passion for what you do, compassion for others, you care, and those are some of the qualities that I think we all need, is to have that caring, and, and being able to place yourself in their position for just a moment as I, as I said, walk in their shoes. Well, thank you, Chuck. What's the basis of what you teach? If somebody said, well, I've heard about Chuck Wolf, but what does Chuck Wolf do? What would you say? Well, first, I'm, I'm an exercise physiologist. Uh, my training, my formal training was in cardiovascular physiology. Uh, we did a lot in, in kinesiology, and that always interested me back then. But um, what I've, I've developed a passion for is understanding human movement from the ground up. How does, <clears throat> how does the foot affect the leg? And how does that also affect the hip and into the back and into the torso? And seeing that chain reaction, because the body is nothing more than a, a myriad of chain reactions, but how we work in three planes of motion. When I first studied it, the book told me one thing. The book told me isolation, one plane of motion, primarily concentric. And with the literature that I've read and my mentors that I've studied under over the course of the years, it really is just the opposite. It's the fact that we work in three planes of motion, we're eccentric first, we're integrated, and when we start thinking from the bottom up, as I relate to, to people who attend my sessions imagine as we walk being under this glass floor looking up and seeing the foot hit the ground and watch the hip and the body move over the foot all of a sudden the muscles take an entirely different reaction that to me gets me pretty exciting now all of a sudden we have to start thinking what's going on forward and back side to side in rotation that's where the complexities come in but we don't have to make it that complex. We can just kind of break it down. And I like to categorize actions and categorize muscles because muscles don't work by themselves. They work synergistically. So we kind of take it into groups and break it down, think what's going on. I, can, I, 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 I try and tell people to transform themselves into different body parts and we have some fun with it. And that's the key, is you have to have fun with what you're doing. This is complex, difficult stuff. Make it applied to things that than the concepts that people can relate to, but it has to be fun. Take your work seriously, but don't take yourself too seriously. That's very well put. <laughs> we try not to take ourselves too seriously. I mean, how can you take yourself too seriously when you've got yourself and you got Boydy with PT on the net? I mean, you gotta have fun with what you do. You gotta have fun. We can have great results, but you have to have that camaraderie. It has to come back to the relationships. It has to come back to, to building that, that rapport and having fun.